We're on. Howdy doody folks, welcome to the Guitar Making Channel. My name's Mark Bailey. I've been teaching people how to make guitars for, what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> About 20 years. Over 400 people have come to the workshop and um, that I learned my trade in a guitar factory. And what I did was I took those techniques and condensed them down to something that you can just do on your bench and so what we did was we got four cameras all over the place and we filmed the whole procedure from start to finish and um, that starts with a blank piece of paper and we lay out starting with the center line we design your dream guitar and then um, go about making it so um, you've probably heard that it's difficult to make guitars and um, you need to have gold rimmed glass spectacles and one of them clicky pencils and all that kind of stuff. Truth is anybody can make guitars. Um, even an idiot like me can do it. So if I can do it, I'm pretty sure you can. And just to help convince you, what I'm gonna do today is I've got an eight minute um, film, um, which is kind of a time-lapse of me building a guitar completely from start to finish. Um, some of you might have seen it before. It's been on my Bailey Guitars channel for a while, but we've not seen it on this channel. <clears throat> it's a guitar that I made for the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, and they raffled it off um, to raise money at Parkfest, which was um, a kind of a rock guitar festival, um, to raise money for the RNLI. So um, uh, it, was, it was won by a young lad called Lewis, who... Uh, Spent all his pocket money on raffle tickets, and then um, and then hassled his gran and his mum and everybody he knew to borrow more money, and he borrowed uh, as much as he could, put put everything he had on raffle tickets, and unfortunately he didn't win. <laughs> but the guy who did win kind of took pity on him, and um, no. they came to a they came to an agreement, some kind of financial agreement, and eventually it turned out that um, Lewis did end up with the guitar. And so it all turned out good in the end. Uh, That's what happened. No. You're Why are you arguing such, with me? She's you, arguing with me already, folks. You tell such a bad story. The, his friends and family clubbed together. I just said that. He borrowed all the money off his friends and family. To buy tickets. To buy tickets. Spent all his money on them. Yeah. Didn't win. Ended up with a guitar at the end of the day. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> the point is, I'm going to show you how easy it is to build a guitar. You probably think it's really difficult, but there's, I don't know, eight or ten basic techniques. Now I actually made um, a guitar completely live from scratch on the live stream um, and there's a playlist for that, Build Your Own Guitar Live on the channel, the guitar making channel. Um, so that's long form, did the whole thing. If you want to see how we did it from start to finish you can go and watch that in long form. Um, and I also have got another playlist on the channel which is called Tools and Techniques where I've basically broken down all the little individual tools and techniques that you'll need to build a guitar. Um, so there's also that playlist if you want to go and um, you can binge watch your way through that. Um, so we're here every Wednesday and Saturday at one o'clock, 1 p.m. is our time. And I always do something, some kind of um, demonstration where the wood chips fly. Uh, something exciting will happen, whatever. Um, come hell or high wind. So we'll be here Wednesdays and Saturdays 1pm and um, 
if you're interested in anything to do with guitar making then make sure you subscribe and if you find something useful in this video then click the like button and do all the youtube -y stuff we're trying to grow the channel and somebody needs to tell youtube so that's how it works we can't do it on our own folks we need your help so if you get the um the video lined up carol then um i'll just briefly introduce it um so this is a fairly basic guitar but there are a few um, alterations that I've made to the basic spec. If you're building a guitar for the very first time then I'd recommend that you stick to something fairly basic like this um, and draw it all out. We go through all that procedure on the course but keep it fairly basic but then once you've got these sort of like eight or ten techniques down well then the world, world is your oyster and you can customize to your heart's content. So in this build you will see um, a few customizations. Um, most notably, I carved the top. So it's not a flat top, it's a carved top. But that's just an extra skill, carving. And um, if that is something that you wanted to do, then there's a video on that. So just to remind you guys, if you want to get on the full courses and see um, the full step-by-step -step video guides with the four cameras and um, professionally edited together, it's a step-by-step -step guide to designing and building your own electric or acoustic guitar. Then you need to become a premium member and head over to guitarmaking.co.uk. Sign up as a premium member and then you get access to all those courses. Um, so if you're ready to play the film, so we've, we've, you're going to see a carved top and you're also going to see I chose some different wood for the build. And... I think the final change in the spec was um, I added some colour. So it's stained blue um, with a satin sealer over the top. Um, so brace yourself. Have you got your cup of teas ready? Um, I haven't. Let me grab my cup of tea. Carol's going to push me in. What am I going to push you into this morning? Yeah, no, don't. I'll push in. Right. I'll do the pushing. Okay. If, you, if you get it lined up and press play. It's lined up. Right. <laughs> playing. So the first thing you'll see me do is join in the body blanks. Now we're going to show you, um, I showed you last week about the kit. The kit in includes all the wood ready to use. So that's one thing you can completely skip. And in our kit, the fretboard is pre-made. It's the only thing that's pre-made for you. Um, pre-made fretboard, then at least you know it's going to play in tune. But your neck and body are just going to be um, great big lumps of wood like this. In this case, it's maple, which is a bit harder. In the kit, yours is going to be mahogany, unless you specify otherwise. If you do want anything that's different from the kit, just ask. So there you saw me using the router. So routing is one of the skills you'll need to use. And there's um, four different types of routing, I believe. Profiling, where we're copying a shape. There's surfacing, where we're doing things like routing the headstock. And here you can see me pocket routing, where we're just copying shapes. Most of it, believe it or not guys, is all about just copying shapes. Um, and I've always said that if you can draw a straight line with a ruler and a pencil, then I believe you can make a guitar. 
and uh, I'm not joking about that. So here's another skill is carving. Again, people are worried about that, but it's really simple, really. Um, it's just like rowing. And there are a couple of tools that I highly recommend for this. Um, all the tools are um, included. There's a free list of tools that are available on the website. Um, one of the tools is one of the things that um, you might be worried about, um, but there are ways and means of getting them. And um, those wooden things underneath, they're what we call jigs and fixtures, and there are a few jigs and fixtures that you'll need, but I've got a whole section on making those jigs and fixtures, and they're all just made from scrap wood, so you don't need anything special. Um, here I'm putting the inlays in, um, it takes a surprising amount of time just to mark them out and put them in by hand. But they're just drill a hole, pop the inlay in, and then sand it flush. Simple as that. And then I'm putting the frets in. So um, I think what I'm going to ask Carol to do is to play this film again when it's finished. Um, and I'm just going to just talk through it again and see if I can pick out each individual technique. So um, when, when we're working on the frets, the most important thing is um, leveling the frets, which is what I call getting it straight. Not it. Yeah, can you pause it there, Carol? Because I can't see it. So, um, we're going to play that one again, and I'm going to try and spot all the different techniques. Uh, so there isn't that many, really. Um, getting it straight is one. That's getting something straight. So that would include joining your body blanks. But again, like I say, you can skip that. The body blanks that we send out in the kit are pre-joined. Um, so you don't even need to do that. We, we, you can skip that one. Getting it straight. Um, routing. A few different types of routing. There's surface routing, when we're routing something flat, and you'll see that when I'm routing the front of the headstock and the back of the headstock. Um, pocket routing, when I'm routing the pickups and the controls. There's um, profiling, where I'm copying a shape. So it all happens really fast, but there is a bit in the film where... Um, you'll see me sticking on... This is what I call a neck taper profile. It's got the same shape as the fretboard. We stick that on the neck and we copy the shape, basically with, um, see, half the trick is, this is one of the uh, secrets of guitar making, is uh, the top bearing router cutter. So it's very simple. Just to copy these shapes, obviously you need to make the patterns, but these are all downloadable as PDFs. Um, you can print them out, uh, stick them on your bit of wood and, or trace them onto your bit of wood and uh, cut them out. All, I'll show you how to do all that on the course. Again, like I say, there's a whole section on making patterns. So um, bandsaw is one of the things that um, it's not actually shown in the film because uh, the, the camera was just showing my bench. But I do cut the rough shape out with a bandsaw um, and then we profile it again with the router, so we copy the shape with the, with the bearing cutter. Um, and I think in this first section, I think that's about it. But we'll watch it through again. And uh, if you see any techniques that I've missed, shout them out in the comments. And if you've got any questions about any of these techniques, make sure to leave a comment. And Carol's going to read them out for us. So, um, yeah, let's just watch that again, and I'll try and, uh, I'll try and pull out the techniques a bit better this time. Um, if you're ready Is to it go. Will it be as loud? No, 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 it'll be quiet. Okay, here we go. Right. So there's a, it goes black, it's, it's a bit of a... Like I say, this was... Uh, is the volume all right? People are saying the volume's all right. Cool. Raised a ton of money.
18 hours down to eight minutes. Here we go. So getting a piece of wood flat is half the battle, believe it or not. And that's why we supply our kits come with flat blanks that are ready to work on. And the fretboard is pre-made. So um, getting something straight is one of the techniques, but you, you can skip that in this case. You'll be starting with something like this. So there's my neck blank. The first thing we do is put the truss rod in. So route in a slot, really easy. There's a fence guide. And here's surface routing. I just routed the surface of my headstock there to make it dead flat. And profiling, copying that shape that I told you about a minute ago into the neck. And that's how we can make um, necks repeatably the same shape all the time, accurately. And here I am making the body. So we need to mark it out first. That's one of the techniques, marking out. You can see me using my patterns to mark out and then also just to copy out the shapes. So routing, copy routing. Um, we work on that fretboard surface there just to get it um, level, ready for gluing the fretboard. And then carving the neck. So, making something round is really difficult. So what we do is we start off by just making nice flat facets and then blending it in is the easy bit. So as if by magic, a beautiful round neck appears. If you just follow the, the simple methods that I, that I explain. So, um, Carol, I'm gonna stop it there. I've got too many buttons in front of me. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so do we have any questions about the first part of that? I mean, that is pretty much, you've just seen a guitar being made in, in four minutes. Um, but it's not, it's not assembled yet. Um, and I think the next bit is I'm just about to carve the body. Um, so carving the body is something that you can completely avoid. You don't even need to do it. <laughs> also, you saw at the end that um, when I was putting the inlays in, you don't actually need to put dots in the front either. This guitar that I made, this is the one that I made completely live, um, doesn't have any dots on the front. Now I always recommend that you put dots on the side, but you don't actually need them on the front. Um, of course it does help, but um, yeah, that'll save you a bit of time and a bit of expense. Another thing you could skip um, if you just want to make a guitar. So yeah, what I'm all about is trying to make it as easy and painless for you to make your first or possibly best yet guitar. So I've got a lot of my students have built loads of guitars before, but they come on my course and then suddenly a lot of things click into place and it becomes a whole lot easier for them. So Carol's got a hand up. We're going to do some questions and then I'll show you the last half of the film. Okay, you've got a whole load of people in the house. We've got Way. the four corners of America <laughs> in. We've got uh, all the usual, the back row is full of all the back Rock and roll. Today. Cheers, folks. Thanks for turning up. Um, Appreciate it. latecomers today, um, they're, they've been named in the chat, obviously. Um, named and shamed. And named and shamed. Right, we've got a couple of comments. Um, somebody, uh, it was Eraser, Eraser101YT said, that um, he's in a, a, a cheap jigsaw, no, a jigsaw used as a cheap bandsaw, you know, um, as an alternative. I hate them. Don't use a jigsaw unless you really have to. If it's all you've got um, and you don't want to go out and buy a bandsaw, then by all means, use a jigsaw. But in my experience, it's a living nightmare. <laughs> because um, I never use my jigsaw because the blades tend to wander. When you're cutting such thick pieces of wood as a guitar body blank, especially if you're using harder pieces like you saw in the film there, that was ash, which is a bit harder than mahogany. Um, again, in the kit I've chosen mahogany because it, it's beautiful to work with. Um, some of the other woods are not quite so beautiful to work with. <laughs> so imagine trying to cut rock hard maple with a jigsaw. I mean, it can be done, but I would suggest um, maybe just do it once. And then when you've finished your guitar, you can sell it 
and then use the money to buy some proper tools. You don't need to spend a fortune on a bandsaw. Um, certainly for a, a couple of hundred pounds, you could get something that's, that's perfectly workable. It doesn't need to be a super duper bandsaw. The smallest bandsaw you can buy will be better than um, any jigsaw, in my opinion, unless you get a really, really expensive jigsaw. Um, one caveat though, when you do buy your bandsaw, you'll probably think it's rubbish. And that's more than likely because it won't be set up very well and it'll be supplied with a, um, a, a really pants blade. So the, when I order a bandsaw, I always order five spare blades or order a spare blade, a couple of spare blades at least. Um, and you'll find that the, the new blades will be a lot more, I don't know, and buy, buy a decent blade for it and you'll find it will vastly improve your look. Okay, so another question. Okay, so um, Wayne... Wayne, Wayne Pedantry. Quite, quite, All right, Wayne. Wayne. How are you doing? Um, he said, um, "Can you get a base kit? Would you, would you know? Can you make well?" Put in the... We are limited as to what is actually in the shop because we have to create a product, take a photograph of it, write a description, put the options, well, and all that kind of stuff. About that. So, um, at the moment, you can buy a base fretboard in the shop, um, and you can I believe you can buy a base neck. Um, but anything that's not there, you can just ask. So if you email carol at baileyguitars.co.uk, she's the one with the brains, and say, can I have a bass kit? Then we'll just, uh, we'll price it up for you. There might be some options to choose from. Um, if you were making a bass, I'd probably, you'd probably be making like a bolt-on bass. Um, the kit that we provide is for a set neck guitar. <clears throat> but we do also do a bolt-on neck kit as well. So yes, just ask and Carol will send you the bill and we'll send it out to you. Wait, Wayne's in Sweden, by the way. That just, re it happens all the time. Um, one of the parcels that has just gone out to, um, I think it's gone to Holland, um, to Bart, it's on its way, Bart. Um, Bart, he wanted um, two piece old at instead of the mahogany. So we just work out the difference in price and send it out, no problem at all. Okay, as long as we've got it. And we've got, I've got a whole room full of wood. I'll take you in there one day with our new roving cam. Did I mention the roving cam? Yes, we've got a roaming cam. <laughs> so I can take you in the workshop, but maybe not today. Um, um, at some point I'll, I'll give you um, a tour of the wood room and, uh, and show you all that. But I've got a whole room full of wood. Uh, some really amazing pieces, uh, which I'll show you one day. But um, yeah, if it's not in the shop, just ask. I've got, we've got everything here you could possibly dream of to do with making guitars. Um, but we just haven't had time to put it all in the shop yet. The guitar making site, guitarmaking.co.uk, it's, it's a work in progress and it probably always will be because there are so many hidden depths to guitars. So at the moment we've got complete electric and complete acoustic builds from start to finish design and builds but there's so many things we haven't covered yet resonators 335s um, and what's what's in my mind at the moment is the uh, the finishing course um, how to spray a guitar um, which we've covered in the other courses there's an oiled finish and a matte finish but um, I want to cover how to do a full gloss any color you know like all these colors here um, and so we're working on, as we speak, a full on how to finish a guitar course, guitar finishing course. Um, so uh, yeah, that's, that's um, super imminent. So um, November's gonna be pretty much dedicated to that. So yeah, I've got a couple of builds on the go. So Ro if Roland's in the house. I've got my hand up. Roland was in the house. I've got a couple of builds on the go which are, you know, I'm sort of 99% there. We're going to actually use Roland's in the finishing course on the, as a, as a, as, um, as an example of um, spraying a guitar with a, with a lacquered fretboard. So that's, that's going to be part of the course. So if I'm a bit distracted, 
Mongo's out there with his chainsaw. <laughs> Can you hear, hear it? it? Yeah. Um, He's out so there trimming so the hedges. So, yeah, it's not hardwood though, is it? Um, so, yeah, things. let's do some questions then before I get carried away. Right, you have got carried away. So, uh, Michael Lagerstad, right? Michael Lagerstad. Hi, Michael. Um, he's got a channel. He, he makes guitars as well. He said that he actually has used um, a, um, a jigsaw quite successfully. There's different kinds of Yeah, it can be done. This, We've all got using, our preferences. He was using 200 year old pine. Um, which obviously yeah, pine's a probably a bit easier. But there's, so there's a very, if people want to see, there's a whole, there's a little discussion about jigsaws. In like the I say, comments. you can use a jigsaw, but my advice is, if you're going to buy something, spend the money on a bandsaw. Spend a bit more, get a cheap bandsaw. It doesn't have to be a super expensive one. It will be way, way better than any jigsaw, and it's much safer. And you know, because with a jigsaw, you're holding it in one hand, you're holding your workpiece in the other hand or something um, it, it can get dodgy with a band saw you can keep your hands well away from the saw as i explain i've got a whole video on band saws um, i would much prefer that so my recommendation is ditch the jigsaw get yourself a band saw and it comes in, sand, in comes in so handy for so many other things not just cutting out guitar bodies but a million other things as well ditch the jigsaw sorry <laughs> Mike Abbott says, can you use a chainsaw instead of a bandsaw? A chainsaw, yeah. <laughs> That's a, that'll be a live demo one day, will it? Okay. Yeah, so no, Mark, you should only use a chainsaw for doing fine inlay work. Mark, there's, there's been a couple of, there's some really good questions, actually. So Ian Jackson says, when you, he was watching you, you route the truss rod slot. Yes. Um, do you, how do you route the bend on for the slot? Or well, it depends on the style of truss rod and... Um, with this style of truss rod, you don't need to pre-bend. Um, I'll show you, I've got one right here. This is, um, this is actually a one-way truss rod, but we, we send a two-way truss rod out in the kit. I'll show you that in a minute. But it's straight, as you can see. It's straight. And it only bends when you tighten it up. Allen key. So, watch it bend when it, we tighten it up. Okay, we can't even see it. There you go. Let's try a different camera. Camera two. There's the bend. Yeah, so it just goes into a straight slot. Straight. Um, so when you put the strings on, your neck bends a little bit. And then you just tweak your truss rod to correct it. Simple. So it fits into a straight slot. You don't need to use a curved slot. You might be confusing it with, if you've seen, a, I did a previous live stream on um, how to do a skunk stripe. That is when you fit a truss rod in from the back of the neck, um, which I did, I can't find it at the moment. I did do that on a previous live stream. Um, and that's a different style of truss rod where it does go into a curved slot. And when we do that, I actually make a curved rail or a pair of curved rails for the router to slide against. I've got one here. Because I, I did a live stream on this. So um, yeah, if that's what you're into, after this one, you can go and watch that. Uh, it's called Skunk Stripe. How to, how to, how to put a truss rod in from the back of the neck or skunk stripe. If you just search for skunk stripe, you'll find it. Okay. Next um, question. All right, can uh, Louis, Louis or Louis Kechovi says that he's building an electric guitar for his school project and he's found, yeah. what we're doing really, he's found it really helpful so far. Oh, cheers for letting us know. Do you know, it makes a difference to us. Um, if, if you do find something useful, just let us know, because it makes all the difference. Uh, in the early days, it used to feel like we were just, you know, I was just talking into the ether, and I didn't know, when I first made my courses, whether it was actually possible that you could explain something on a camera, and I could show you stuff, and then you could actually, you know, actually physically do it at home. Um, but... Um, but yeah, it became apparent pretty quick 
uh, I kind of put the first one up as a test to see if it was going to work. People started signing up straight away. And um, I started getting pictures of people's finished guitars. It was amazing. Um, some people I didn't even know they were they were doing it. Um, people would sign up and then six months later, I just get start getting pictures from them about guitars that they're making. It's amazing. There are people all over the world now using my really basic methods. As you can see, you don't need don't need no stinking CNC. Sorry, Darren. <laughs> we don't need no CNC. We do it all by hand on a bench. Um, maybe if in a future course we'll do a CNC guitar, but um, but at the moment. Everything's done by hand on a bench using simple hand tools. The biggest ones are the bandsaw and the router. If you're not sure about the tools, there's a look in the description below this video and there's a whole load of links and stuff that will help you out, including the links to the free plans and the PDFs and uh, the, the uh, ebook on essential tools, which will help you out. Yeah, questions, questions, right. let's do them. Quick so, round. Uh, Phil Wilde was saying that... Um, hey, Phil. He said that uh, a, a bandsaw isn't much good if you haven't got a shed, right? Um, you can put it under your bench. Well, I said it's not probably not go down well in your kitchen, right? So he's been he's been using good so that's good. Um, right. Yeah, uh, I built a guitar in Carol's kitchen, um, and it, it does get a bit dusty. Right. So yeah, <laughs> we did very do that. Popular. We did do that. Once, didn't we? Um, so yeah, you do need somewhere to build it. That's the other thing you'll need is, but you don't need a massive great workshop like me. Um, using using my methods that I show you, you just need one bench, and um, that is actually evidenced by. Robin Gosman, who's one of our students right at the moment. If you go to the, the, guitar, the site, you'll see the forum there, which is completely free, and you can see what everybody's getting up to. Robin Gosman has got a tiny little um, corner. He hasn't even got power in there. He's using um, battery-powered lights and an inverter, um, and he's building all his guitar on a tiny little bench in the corner. I suppose he has got a shed. You do need somewhere to do it. Um, so yeah, there is that caveat. You need some tools, you need somewhere to do it, and you need to know how to do it. But we're here to help. If you haven't got your own shed, then um, think of, you could think about joining men's sheds. You know, there's these community groups where you can go and join. I suppose, you know, with the current situation, m might not be feasible. But... Um, but certainly for the future, that's what I normally recommend, is that you join a community group. If you haven't got your own shed, um, go and join one of these community men's sheds. Mm. Cool. Go on then, next question. Well, and just, just that, there's all sorts of, there's a lot of, of really helpful chat today. People are putting in... Cheers, folks. ...about tools and things. Too much to mention out loud. So if, if people are watching, yes. if you're interested in anything we've said, Check the chat out. Always worth reading the um, chat on these live streams because um, it will make everything make a bit more sense as well because I'm answering questions on the live stream. And also pre people are bringing up all sorts of really important stuff. Um, way too much to cover in, in just the short time that we've got. You know, I used to think, how the hell are we going to fill half an hour or an hour? And it just goes like that because there's so much that I've got to tell you. But the courses, it's all in there. Um, the design course is five hours of material and the build course is eight hours of material for the electric guitar. Um, you don't have to watch the whole thing, you can just pick and choose the bits just to get you out of a hole if you want, a lot of people do that. But it's all there if you need it. Hours and hours and hours, over 400 videos waiting for you right. as a premium member. Go on, I'm waiting for questions, okay. I'm just oh, filling cover. It's all gone wild, it's all gone wild. Right, so... Um... Right. Questions have gone berserk. If right. we don't get to your question today, f folks, then I do apologise, but head over to the forum, guitarmaking.co.uk. It's free to join, and um, the, the forum's free to join. You get free plans and all that, and you can ask your question there, and we'll all get to it at some right. point. Which is, which is the next thing, because Louis, Louis who said, or Louis who said that he was um, building it for, for a project, he says... Um, do you have some tips or things I need to put attention to? My grandfather will help me because he is really good at working wood. So that's exactly what you mean there, isn't it? Go to the forum. Go to the forum and... Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Having somebody to help you, like your, your grandpa or um, your dad or your teacher or someone, um, if you're under 16, um, I would say is pretty much essential. 
Um, some of these tools you probably don't want to be using if you're under 16 on your own, unsupervised. But we've had, um, I think the youngest we had in here was, we had 12 year old building a guitar. They think it's easy. Kids think it's easy, don't they? And they just do it because it is easy. Most, well, most guitars are built in factories and they're not populated by genius luthiers because all the genius luthiers go and set up their own workshops, don't they? <laughs> So in a factory, you've just got people who want to turn up, do the same thing all day long, nice easy job, and then leave. Nine till five, that is how most guitar factories work, believe it or not. Every job, um, anybody can do. It has to be like that because if I walk out or if I'm sick, they have to have somebody else who can do my job. So I basically took that philosophy and shrunk it down so it works on your bench like I say we've got um, all the cameras sorted so that you can see it from every angle even a super close-up cam and uh, yeah we've just introduced the Roman cam <laughs> so it's gonna get um, it's gonna be fun right. in the run-up to Christmas can you, can we'll do some roving Take a couple of things Go on then, find me some super fast questions because okay, we're running so, out of time. Uh, Michael, Michael Lagerfeld, I, I think that was his name, um, he said, uh, how much do you use template or how much should templates be used? Question it's a brilliant that. question. Uh, when you're if you're just making one guitar, you, you probably don't need to make, um, you know, a, a body shape template. I would recommend you definitely make... Um, You'll definitely need your, your pickup templates. In fact, if on the course there are essential templates and then there are some bonus non-essential ones. So um, head over and uh, check out the, um, the pattern section of the electric guitar course. And it, it shows you which ones are essential and which ones aren't, all right? Um, but yeah, things like body shapes, if you're just making one guitar, you might wanna you might not want to go to the extent of making an actual body shape um, pattern. But if you're making more than one, then for sure, definitely make patterns because it adds um, accuracy, repeatability, um, speed. And um, well, I quite enjoy making patterns. I like it. So um, you make all your mistakes on your patterns and then you're not wasting expensive timber. So making patterns is good practice um, and it will, you know, it could save your expensive piece of wood. So uh, yeah, I do use patterns. I use patterns for, for pretty much everything unless it really is a complete one-off and then I might just, I might just make it as a one-off. Right, one last thing, uh, TV1001 said, if only there was uh, templates available to buy for cutting <laughs> The next thing. Yeah, well, the main yeah, templates are all free on the site. No, he was talking about... We are, the we are working on putting... <laughs> um, so um, Darren King, who's one of our Salubrious members, um, also runs bagpress.com, um, um, makes amazing vacuum press equipment. I've also made a... We made a masterclass on that. Um, Darren came here and we made a masterclass on using the bag press for guitar making. But that's like an advanced... Um, like a advanced thing, certainly not essential for a beginner. Um, what am I talking about? Um, I was just saying about you patterns. Can, so Darren, Darren's got a, a whole workshop, CNC uh, kind of style workshop with laser cutters and stuff. So he's um, he's going to be making our patterns. And you saw on our on the last live stream actually, I showed you the fret slot template that he's making. So um, yeah, I've got a few little tweaks that I'd like to that, okay. which we're talking to him about. But Darren's gonna be making all our patterns, which will be available for sale on the website Darren! as soon Darren! as we can do it. As as we're working on it, Tony. Right. So anyway, the general consensus is that you can't just make one, you have to make, keep making them. That's it, um, I mean, even people... most people, by the time you've finished making your first one, you've already planned your second and your third one. So go ahead and make the patterns and then you can make 10 guitars. And uh, Pio remember Piotr a couple of weeks ago? Of course, yeah, Piotr. He, he said that he was Cheers, doing mate. his first guitar. Piotr joined up as a member, and so I just want to say thank his, you. Do you remember he said he was building his first? Well, he's already, he's already planning. <laughs> there you go, okay. that's it. You get the bug. 
There You'll are, be planning your second and third by the time you've finished your first. There are quite a few questions, right? Let's do super um, fast no, questions. No, I think we, I, I want to save them until afterwards. Okay. So we'll probably, but we'll one, show you the last half of the film. One more thing to say is that um, Adam Bark, one of the... Adam! From the, the school, one of the school course guys is in the house. Hey, Adam, how are you doing? So Adam made a guitar with us. We, we actually ran our course in, in a couple of schools um, a few years ago. And we had pre-cataclysm. And these kids were between 12 and 14. And um, they all designed and made guitars for the schools. And Adam Bark, who's here in the comments. Hi, Adam. Adam was one of the, the kids on the course. So hopefully you went off and became um, Lord Mayor or something. I'm hoping I had an influence on you. You became the manager of the biggest factory in your area or something like that. But they played, do you remember they played um, Smoke on the Water? Oh yeah, they did a school assembly with their finished guitars. No, no, they that, made... was, that was Slider, I think. Or Feeder, yeah. was it? It was, it was serious rock. Anyway, that's another thing. We just wanted to say that. Are we ready for the next Anyway, time? good to see you, Adam. Um, oh, and there's been a little, because this is about for a 335 course, but we'll... Yeah, we'll... so this video is called Anyone Can Make Guitars. We're going to play the last half of the, the time lapse just to show you the last the really simple techniques that you'd need to use. And then a bit of a rogues gallery at the end just to show you it really is true that anyone can make guitars. You don't need to be a, a luthier genius or anything like that. So are you ready to go, Carol? Yeah, um, let's, I'm going I'm to try it. Are right, you ready? I'll, I'll push it in. Hey! So um, it started from just a little bit further back. Um, so here we are, I'm um, carving the body. You can completely skip this, as I mentioned earlier. You don't need to do this, but it does make it look a bit nicer and it adds a bit of ergonomics, a bit of shaping on the body. You can skip this, but there is a video which will show you exactly how to mark out and carve any shape you like um, on the course. You can find the, there's a live stream on that as well. So this is the part of the build that I call body shaping. And there's lots of different options for that. Um, sanding, believe it or not, is one of the major skills. This is what separates a really rough looking guitar from a professional looking guitar. So what we do is we start with rough sandpaper and we go through the grits, um, rough, medium and smooth until we finish. And then, um, what you're seeing me doing now is drill all the little link holes. When you carve a top, you have to fit the pots individually, and um, the controls, I should say, individually. That makes it a bit more tricky. So it's not just carving the top. Then you've also got to fit the pots, which is why I don't recommend it for a beginner. But again, that's all covered on the course. Um, and here you see, even though I've got an electric sander, I always go over everything by hand because you just get a better finish. It looks more professional. Look, I've even tied my hair back. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Your brown hair. So, after sanding, there's another job called finiting, where we just knock all the sharp edges off and we just get it ready for applying a finish. Um, there you just see me putting the side dots in and sanding the neck. So, I'm um, guessing that at this point the neck is ready to be fitted into the body. There's a bit of a procedure to doing that, it's not quite as simple as it looked there. We have to put an angle on the um, neck so that it arrives at the right height for the bridge and then we glue it in. So you didn't see me actually spraying the guitar, it's magically gone blue but um, that's what we're working on right now is the finishing course. So here's another skill, so um, soldering is a skill that you'll need to learn. Um, it's really basic, there's a few little tips and tricks that you'll need. Um, a couple of hard, really hard won lessons. It's one of the things I struggled with when I was learning, but a few little tips and tricks really got me over the hump. And now I can pretty much wire up any guitar um, uh, without any problems. So at this point, pretty much any guitarist could assemble the guitar. Um, putting the guitar together is um, its pretty much like assembling a kit at this point. 
What you can see here is my string tension simulator. Um, that's again above and beyond what you would normally need or, or have. You don't need a string tension simulator. Um, but what I'm doing is leveling the frets. Um, so again, leveling is one of the skills. Um, getting something straight, but it's a lot simpler than people think. Basically, it's a case of locating the high spots and removing the high spots. And I show you on the course, you know, in detail how to go through that. And once you've leveled the frets, then there's about an hour and a half work to go through to actually recrown them, because leveling them leaves a flat spot on the top. So they need to be recrowned to made round again. And then they need to be dressed and polished so that they feel like glass when you, when you play. When you bend a string over a fret, it should feel like sliding on glass. Lovely. So again, all covered on the course. And um, the last thing is to do is final setup. If you've done a good job of the build, the final setup is a piece of cake. There's only three jobs involved. We set the action. I'll get them in the right order. So we set the truss rod, we set the action, and then we set the intonation. Okay, it's got to be done in that order and you need to tune it, you need to be in tune for each one of those jobs. So when you tune it up for the first time, the neck actually bends. So you set the truss rod to straighten the neck. Then you can set the action. Once the action's set, then you can set the intonation. So there is a, a procedure to go through um, once you've actually assembled the guitar to make it play like an old friend. That's what we're looking for. Or as my friend Sam Winston says, um, play like a cloud. You want it to play like a cloud. Um, yeah, the idea is to make a guitar that feels like one that you've had for 20 years. That's, the, that's what we're looking for. It's a brand new guitar, but it feels like an old friend, comfortable old friend, you know. So that's what we're after. And uh, that's what it's all about. So um, we'll do another quick round of questions on that then. And then we'll do the, the last, we're going to show you the rogues gallery. Um, okay. Just to prove that anyone can make guitars, even ugly buglies and people who aren't very bright like me. <laughs> okay, well, um, and just on that... Even ladies, Carol, can oh. do it. Right, Can't that's they? it, I'm going. <laughs> Come on, quick. If, if you don't get banned for that, then you bloody well should, excuse my language. Right? I, I was so, quoting someone. No, but that's... Anyway, so... um. Well, a couple of comments, but one one was um, about, you know, like, um, although it's not a cheap hobby, but a lot of people start building Yeah, it's guitars, not a cheap hobby. But they start building guitars because they can't afford to buy the, the, the custom whatever that they want. So that's Yeah, you're looking at one. Um, I couldn't afford a decent guitar, so I got a job in a guitar factory. <laughs> I built my own. But you were so lucky, weren't you? I was very, very lucky. I mean, and so, how many guitar um, factories are there in? Britain? But then you, I do think you make your own luck, don't you? You know, I had to go and knock on the door until they let me in. They told me to go away the first time. More than once. <laughs> so, um, and how many times? I wasn't having that. Eventually they let me in and uh, I learned how to do it. And um, that's the short story. Okay, so we've got some other questions. Right, Roll Shooting says, why a string tension simulator? Right, a string tension simulator is going above and beyond the call of duty. You don't need one. Um, when you get to professional level like me, then you, you have to kind of try and keep doing things to put you above the rest of the crowd. And so um, a string tension simulator is one of those advanced tools that can, uh, can really help you out in some tricky situations. Um, most necks I don't, I don't use it on. Um, but there are the occasional neck, which is problematic, it's really handy for. So just quickly what it does, right, is we, we get a guitar that's fully in tune and we set the truss rod to get the neck as straight as we can possibly get it. And then we strap it into the string tension simulator. Then what we do is we take the strings off and the string tension simulator has built-in clamps, 
which allow me to bend the neck back to as if the strings were on. And there are dials so that I can see exactly it's where it was before. So it is simulating the tension of the strings. <laughs> and then I can level the, the fretboard as if the strings are on. You see, so it's string tension simulator. You don't need it, um, but it is a really handy tool to get you out of the odd sticky situation. Um, sometimes you get a, a neck that's a, a really quite a bendy one or um, you're just, just a really tricky one. Um, it's really handy for acoustic guitars because um, they're quite tricky to hold and it actually it's, it's the reason I'm using it in the video in this case really was because it's just handy to hold the guitar um, and I always say that getting your workpiece flat and straight is half the battle but clamping and holding is the other half of the battle yeah there's another half of the battle as well which is you need to know what to do what order to do it in and when to stop <laughs> so there's three halves to the battle and guitar makers have got three hands um, as you get better at guitars you start developing your third hand which is very useful for clamping and holding okay okay i'm gonna stop talking rubbish next question right, so quick fire quick fire oh, come okay. on so um oh i'll have to look up who it was but somebody um i think it was uh i'll, I'll have a look anyway somebody asked about uh, binding sharp corners do you use two pieces or do you bend the binding um, binding sharp corners yeah cut and join it um you can't bend it around a tight corner so you need to cut it and join it um, I'm trying to think if I actually covered that on the course. I'm not sure because binding is adding a lot of time, difficulty, possibly expense and um, stress to your build. So not recommended for the beginner. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Smooth curves can be done without cutting, but if it's a, if it's a tight curve, you'll need to cut it and join it. Okay, so um, next thing, uh, Super Clunk says, um, do you think you'll be, be able to do a base build course? So that's an, you know, like having the base kit. There's there? no reason why we couldn't. Um, it's it. just time. Uh, I really want to focus on getting this finishing course done for Lots you guys. Lots of questions about that. Because that is the most common thing that I'm asked about. So I really want to get this, um, this finishing course done. But the truth is that... Um, Building a bass is exactly the same as building a guitar. So many, many people have built basses using the exact same methods that I show you on the course. So it's, it's not a problem. It's already covered, really. You cover it in All the, the methods and techniques are the same. You cover it in the design well, session? Well, I, I, in the design session, I'm drawing a guitar, but you can use exactly the same um, steps and procedure to draw your bass. You're just using different parts and different measurements. Um, work your way through the design course you can actually design anything it can be a mandolin if you want or a ukulele or a bass a six string five string bass um, anything you want using the same design methods it's just that I'm showing you using a guitar I'm showing you using the guitar that I think should be your first build to make your life easier so you don't end up hating yourself <laughs> That's what it's all about, folks. So if you don't mind hating yourself a bit, make it as difficult for yourself as you want. But, um, but I'm here to try and guide you towards, you know, it not being too stressful. OK, now you've had... Um, I've saved these. Uh, oh, no, so Deej asked... Um, hey, Deej. Are the pattern PDFs members course available soon? Um, he was asking about, uh, basically, are, are the pattern PDFs for members going to be available soon, I think? The PDF patterns? Yes. What okay. it's going to be is there's going to be... Um, there are some free patterns already, enough to make a guitar for free. If you just go to the link in the description below, you can go and find all those. What I want to do is build an archive of all the patterns that you would need to build any guitar. So I've got one, two, three, four, five shelves over there full of patterns 
um, all like this, all different shapes. Um, for everything you could probably think of. What we're currently doing is drawing around them all, scanning them all in, and we're trying to get them all uploaded. Um, and they'll all be available free to our premium members to download. Um, but if you're not a premium member, then we're going to maybe charge like 50p or something to download a pattern. Um, okay. And they'll also be available as physical, usable, actual patterns. Obviously, they'll be a bit more expensive. So, yeah, we are working on the patterns archive, but like most things, it always takes a little bit longer than we think, and uh, uh, we're on it. Okay, so this is a really... You, you started this. You started today. This was about um, making things easy. Yes. We, you've mentioned the kit, right? Three people have asked a question from a different angle about storage of wood. Okay, so shall I? Perfect. So the first question was asked by Matt Toman, and he asked, "How long do you dry wood for?" Let me tell you three questions. The the second question was, um, "If." Piotr has a a, a, a humid seventy percent average humidity in his workshop. So how how would he deal with that? How how does he you know is that good or what what you know what can he do with that right? And then the last question was from Eddie Cameron about the kits about do how do we a lot of people have central heating at homes? How do we recommend that that people acclimatize stuff? There's three things I'll make sure you answer them. Okay, so. Um, wood is like a sponge and so even if it's been drying out for a year or two years if you cut into it the moisture content in the center of that wood will be more than the outside wood's always taking on and losing moisture it's always going to be a little bit um, more in the middle um, until it's fully acclimatised. So most of our wood is, is already completely acclimatised. Um, but when it gets to you, the best thing to do is to store it in your workshop for about two weeks before you use it. Once it gets used to um, your workshop, see it's soaking, the, it's soaking up the atmosphere, and once it's kind of like uh, stable or acclimatized it takes about two weeks to acclimatize um, then it, it shouldn't warp or twist um, 70 percent however is a little bit damp on the damp side so um, what i would recommend you do is get a, a dehumidifier i've got one over there i'll just drag it over and show you That's So most people with central heating will have the opposite problem. Um, it's more likely to be too dry. Um, ideally, you want your humidity between um, about 45% would be ideal. So 40 to 50%. Um, 45% is ideal. Uh, so if a piece of wood gets, um, gets damp, it expands. That's usually not catastrophic. If a piece of wood gets too dry, then it can shrink. If it gets really, really dry, it will shrink and shrink and shrink until it actually splits and cracks. That can be a catastrophe. So um, we try and build our guitars in an environment that is um, a little bit, just a little bit on the dry side. So it climatizes into that atmosphere and then if it goes into a super dry atmosphere, it can usually cope. If you build your guitar in a 70% humidity atmosphere, and then it goes into a central heated house, which is super dry and hot, then it's going to dry out. And obviously, as, as it dries out, it's going to move, potentially move. So your best bet is to get a dehumidifier and um, try and get your workshop to about 45 to 50% humidity. Um, we want to be just slightly on the side of dry than on the side of wet, ideally. 
So um, we've we've um, recently had all central heating put in. We've got all radiators and that. So I don't actually need my um, dehumidifier anymore. Here it is. It's been sitting in the corner, just going dusty because it's it's not needed anymore. Um, one thing you can do to drive down the humidity is um, is turn the heat up a bit. But of course, it's going to depend on your um, on your environment. It's different, you know, for every country. And uh, but this is a, an industrial dehumidifier. It doesn't have to be an industrial one. It's super expensive. The difference is that a, uh, an industrial one. Um, it has corrosion proof elements inside. So um, the thing is in a workshop, um, wood dust is actually quite, it can be corrosive to things like dehumidifiers. It can damage the, uh, the, the gubbins. <laughs> Technical. Um, and so a commercial one, an industrial one, is, I, I don't know if it's got coating on it or something, but it's, um, they last a lot longer than your domestic ones. But having said that, a domestic one will work perfectly well and they're a lot cheaper. Uh, there was a point in here where I had to have three or four of them going before my central heating, you know, just to keep the moisture down. Um, so I appreciate it. It's not easy. Um, Insulate and seal up all the gaps as much as you can. Turn the heating up a bit and um, get a dehumidifier. That's my best advice for you. Aim for 45 to 50% humidity. Um, yes, and so a couple of comments on that, like um, uh, Rock and Roller says, wood dust is a fire risk also. Um, yeah, wood dust is a fire risk. So uh, make sure you sweep up all the time. Keep your workshop tidy. I do actually, I have actually personally met, um, well, I can think of two guitar makers that I've met whose workshops have actually burnt down. So uh, be careful. And it's dust that does it. So keep your workshop as dust free as possible. Um, yeah, I'm gonna actually do a video on that at some point, because we did have a war on dust at one point and um, that we've got lots of tips and tricks for that. In fact, while I'm on the fucking subject, oh. <gasps> oh, I swore. Damn. Honestly, that's what will get you kicked off. Dear, oh dear. Apologies. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Um, Mark, um, what, can I get you to get something? Go on then. Um, can you uh, show the patterns and the jig? There's been discussion about that. What, this? Show, yeah. Just show people that briefly because that's what's coming because eraser eraser 101 yt he was um talking about this you've probably have seen something and you've got the base similar there's other things on there but this is what's going to be in our shop isn't it yeah so um our resident cnc genius has come up with this there's six uh, scale lengths on every pattern so he's made one which has got all my favorite ones on so you only really need to buy one of these and it covers pretty much everything. But there's another one for baritone guitars, there's one for bass guitars. Uh, he's got Maca Ferries covered, everything, classical guitars. So pretty much any scale length you could possibly dream of is covered. And that's coming soon, isn't it? With yeah, and so the there's a hole drilled for every fret. You stick your fretboard on there. There's a pin in the jig, which locates into there. So here's um, here's uh, as it stands at the moment. So it's just a, a couple of little things I'm talking to Darren about, and then um, we'll get we'll get them on the website. But um, awesome work, eh? Fantastic. So this is all CNC'd, so it's super accurate. And it's got these mega hard bearing surfaces, which are adjustable. And then the, the saw also has this, if I just get it out. 
The saw also has this bearing surface on it. It's like an extreme low, low friction, hard bearing tape surface. So that's going to run in there like that. Frictionless. Um, I will actually um, do a video on this at some point. He says he's blushing at the back of the class. So yeah, top work, Darren. <laughs> See, even Darren's packaging is top notch. Look at this. Oh, oh Mark. So listen, Gerald Baranski says thanks, man. What these do for me is increase my confidence to build my first build. He wants to make a blonde 53 style telly. Thanks for all that you do. Fantastic. How beautiful is that? Yeah, so that's... I imagine you'll be able to buy um, each individual part separately or the whole thing as a kit. Um, but you won't need to buy all six of those. Um, you just you should just pick and choose which ones you want, really. Well, they're, pick, they're, ganging up, they're ganging up on you. Wayne, Wayne um, who is in <laughs> Sweden, says, when will they be available for purchase? Right. Have you, has TV 101... ASAP. ASAP, we're on it. <laughs> yes. We do really appreciate all your support and your massive, <laughs> gargantuan amounts of patience for us. We are trying our hardest. Um, but there's a lot of stuff to get out. Um, I've been working on this guitar making academy for five years now. Um, we've already got the entire design and build process for electric guitars and acoustic guitars. We've got a um, bolt on neck um, and masterclass on a bag press um, where we show you five or six or seven different um, uses of the bag press for making guitars. So um, we've done a lot. We've come a long way, haven't we, Carol? We've come an amazing way. But we're not there yet. We've got a long way to go. We've got a long way to go. So I just want to, I'll take this opportunity just to say thank you to you all. Every one of you. Um, all our regulars and our veterans and, uh, and our newbies alike. Um, we do really appreciate it. Um, I think anyone can make guitars. That's what this video has um, been all about. We're going to finish by showing you a rogues gallery. Carol's got her hand up again, so... Um... Right, there's one last question. Which was... One last question, and okay. then we'll do it. Um, so, at the very, right before we even went live... <laughs> yeah, we had a question before we even went live. It's been busy today. Yeah. So, um, this was at quarter to, to, quarter to one. This was before we went live. Uh, Eddie Cameron said that he wants to make a small guitar for a small person um, as a present and um, he, want, he wants to make a small neck and he wondered if they need, you know, can you recommend a small truss rod or what do you think about that small, small... Okay. If you make a guitar that is a really long scale length, then it becomes no longer a guitar, it becomes a baritone. If you make it even longer, it becomes a bass. And they actually sound different, don't they? The same goes, applies if you make it shorter. So if you make a, for instance, if you make an acoustic guitar, you make it the same length as a mandolin, guess what? Sounds like a mandolin. <laughs> so just bear that in mind. If you want to make it super small, then you're probably making a ukulele or, or a mandolin. Um, I would suggest that maybe about 22 inches is probably the smallest scale length um, for a guitar. Uh, a sort of medium scale length for a guitar is 25 inches, just to give you a, um, an example. A long scale length for a guitar is 25 and a half, and a short scale length is 24 and three quarters. Once you start going much below that, like 23, it's like the old Fender Mustangs, I think, were 23. If you go much smaller than that, then it starts to um, it starts to not be a guitar anymore, is what I would say. And you'll you'll struggle to get strings where you'll actually be able to get the thing in tune. So, my recommendation would be use a normal scale length, like use a short scale length for a guitar, like 24 and three quarters. That's the short scale length. 
but make the body small and that will make it a lot easier to play and it will also it will be a full sized fretboard then although the smallest normal sized it will be a full sized fretboard and then whoever it is can can kind of grow into it if you see what i mean um, oh, um, okay. that would be my recommendation i wouldn't go below 23 inches myself um, for a guitar but you can I think I've seen down to like 22 but like I say you go much smaller than that then you're going to struggle getting strings and it won't be a guitar anymore um, Foolin' Universe says he, a he made a short guitar so he's going to put some picks on the forum yeah um, so when you get um, sort of down to the really sh you'll have seen soprano guitars then what they do is they tune the lower E string that will be tuned to an A and then every other guitar will be tuned relative to that so it's still you play you play your E form chord. It still sounds like an E, but it's actually an A. So there's that soprano guitar. Okay. So la last comment. We've um, we've had a couple of people that haven't uh, watched before join us. Um, the Cheers, folks. Um, uh, the last one. So you can you give a shout out to the Florida bearded fisherman. Wow. Florida. He's he's actually in Florida, and he said thank you to you from Florida. Um, well, I asked thank him, you. But I asked him if it was warm and he said, heck yes, he'd already been in the pool this morning. So on that note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind a bit of that. Bit of a swim. Be nice, wouldn't it? Get me ligaments stretched. So it's now, it's quarter past two, Mark. Right. Quarter past two, so we're going to play uh, a bit of a rogues gallery. Anyone can make guitars. It's not everybody though. No, it's not everybody. If if you came on a course, or uh, and you're not in this rogues gallery, don't be don't, don't hate us. <laughs> <laughs> this is just uh, the the, easiest file to find. the 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 handful of pictures that Carol could lay her hands on this morning. Quickly. So um, if you spot yourself, make a comment. And if you don't, F's in the comment if you don't spot yourself. Um, so yeah, um, I'm, I can't remember everybody's names either. So uh, there's been over 400 people now built a guitar with me. remember anybody's name. I can't remember them all, all can faces. I? But I remember most of their guitars. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's just play the film and I'll, we'll just react as we go. Are you pushing yourself in then? Um, yeah, I'll push, me, I'll push myself in. Here we go. Yep, so acoustics, electrics, all sorts. There's a Bigsby. There's Yay, another Rosie. Bigsby. Rosie is in Texas. There's our Martin, carved top curve. That's the bagel man from Brighton. That's a nice guitar. Short scale, that one was. And there's our Stevie P, the GPO guitar. That's a nice guitar, I like that one. Bolt on neck. That one I affectionately call the slug. <laughs> there's a... Um, some of the kids from the um, school I was telling you about. And there's the first time you'll see Annie. <laughs> there's another one of our youngsters. Yeah, make sure you get... Um... Beautiful cap. Annie. Oh, look, so girls can do it as well. We don't Stop get enough being... girls, do we, Carol? Women. We don't get enough oh. women on our course. There's not enough women guitar makers out there. Just it's not guys. difficult. Beautiful. Look or a violin-shaped one. See, you can make it any shape you oh. want. And you can carve it or oh, not carve it. Sam Shields. Ah, oh, Sam Shields. Hi. There's Matt. Matt, he's on the forum. Hi. There's our James Gemmel, Naughty James. Beautiful. And there's a husband and wife who came on the course together. Rock and roll, dude. Surfer wow. dude. Another surfer dude. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just to show the variety of the guitars that we make on the course. And, um, and people, do, you know, you can make a guitar any shape you want and you can customise it to your heart's content once you've got those basic methods down. So uh, don't forget, I've got a whole, there's a whole free playlist on all the tools and techniques that you need. And um, there's Annie again, look. <laughs> she got in there twice. Sorry. There's Mike Tarr. Some of these people have gone on to become professional makers in their own right. Um, not all of them are, are with us, unfortunately. There's uh, Steve McKean. Uh,
He's gone to New Zealand. There's our shark. Our Tam. Tam was in a wheelchair and he managed to do it. Um, three deck bass there. So yeah, loads of basses we've done on the course. Loads of acoustic guitars. Um, even black ones for our rock dudes. Even ones with scrolls. Just yeah, basically, then. you dream it, you can make it. That's back to the school again when we made Different it at school. Hastings High, I think that was. No. No, which school was that? <laughs> Paramedic. Australian Looney. <laughs> John Lockett! Groovy man. Now he made that guitar in tribute to his to his mum. He made a nice inlay. They so, so were from Holland. From he Holland, yeah. From Ireland. So people come from all over the world. They Iceland. were from Iceland. Viking. People come from all over the world to my Look tiny little workshop. There's Marcel from Holland. He was from Spain. Yeah. Usually, brothers. usually there's four people on a course. Brothers. There's two brothers. They're from Iceland. Holland. Holland. <laughs> <laughs> and there's our Lewis. So um, that's Lewis when he was a. a when he were a nipper, with, his first, with, his first. With, it, with the first guitar that he built on the course. So yeah, Lewis, for those of you that don't know, Lewis became my apprentice. And, uh, and now he's gone on to be, well, more of a partner really. So Lewis is now, he's taken over from his, from his dad and uh, he's doing all, all the spraying for uh, Bailey guitars uh, in the back room there. So if you've had a guitar sprayed by us very recently in the last year or so, then it will be Lewis that's done it. Cheers, Lewis. He had a good teacher. A couple of good teachers. Aye. That's another story which we'll get to at some point. So yes. Um, I think uh, Mungo's going crazy with his chainsaw out the back. So... Uh, can't wait to see what he's done. <laughs> I think we're going to call it a day there. So yeah, if you um, if you want to get hold of one of our kits, head over to the guitar making site, guitarmaking.co.uk. What it's all about is trying to make it as easy as possible and as pain free as possible um, to give you the best possible chance of success in your guitar making adventures. So that's what it's all about. If there was something in this video that you found useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Somebody needs to tell YouTube to get their act in order. Um, they demonetized my last video. We never found out why, <laughs> but they've re-monetized it again. So apparently it's now suitable for the ads, but, um, but it's a bit late now because we lost all our, um, or momentum from that so yeah the last video was my our most popular live stream ever I got 500 views uh, in the first day and then YouTube put the kibosh on it <laughs> so anyway I've shared it again and uh, <clears throat> but the thing is once it's lost its initial momentum that's that's it so hopefully this one will be just as popular as the last one and we can stick it to the man do you want to just, uh, <laughs> you're going to flash Roland's guitar. Roland's here. All right, Roland. So, yes, I'm, it's taking a little bit longer because I'm using it, I'm, I've been filming this one, using it as an example. Oh, look at the, uh, uh, I'm using it as an example for how to, to, um, how to spray a fretboard, basically. If you want a sprayed fretboard, you need to lacquer it before you put the frets in. That's the proper way to do it. That's all going to be covered on the finishing course. This is actually going to become um, part of the bonus section. Every course on the site has got a little bonus section with some extra little bits in. Yep, over 400 videos now. Hours and hours and hours of material, which you can dib in and out of or follow as a step-by-step -step guide to building your own electric or acoustic guitar completely from scratch, starting with a blank piece of paper, working through the whole process until you've made your dream guitar yeah it might not be as easy as I make out you will need a certain amount of determination 
but I seriously do believe that anybody can make guitars. As you saw in the pictures, we've had people in wheelchairs. I had a guy who only had one good hand. Um, we've had kids do it, uh, young and old. I believe anybody can do it. Um, what I did was just broke down what seems to be a very long, difficult job into lots of um, 50 or 60 10 minute jobs basically is what it is. So yeah, have fun, head over to the site, um, have a look on the forum and uh, it's our premium members that are actually keeping us going. So uh, yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, like and all, do all that kind of stuff. Right, Carol, we're done. The most important thing, of course, when it comes to guitar making is to check twice and cut once. <laughs>